The vision of education has changed. More and more families have seen the benefits of homeschooling and are choosing a different life. Our desire is to bring together qualified teachers with families who are yearning for a Steiner-centered experience. We are a worldwide virtual school. Our goal is to give every child the opportunity to have a true Steiner-centered education at an affordable price, all while allowing families the flexibility to follow their passions. We invite you to attend our question and answer or send us an email with all your questions and start envisioning how Seasons of Seven can help your family live their best life. Welcome to this week's podcast. I am super excited this week to have both my good friend and partner in crime, Melanie Novakovich, that runs our school, and my good friend, Miss Jaya, that is going to be coming back with us this year. So I thought today we would just, I'm going to just introduce Jaya, and I thought we would talk a little bit about where she's been, why she's coming back, and how excited we are to have her back. So welcome, Jaya, and welcome, Melanie, to the podcast. This is usually just me, so I'm glad to have you guys here. Thank Thanks you so much. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk, Miss Jaya, about, let's see, you were with us in the first couple of years, and then you stepped away and went back to in-person, and then now you're coming back. So, you know, what, I'd love it if you would talk about your experience of both, you know, you've had, because you'd had both before, you'd had, you'd had in-person before, then you came to be with us, and then you went back to in-person, like, what do you feel like is your favorite things about both, and what is your, like, what are, what are you excited about coming back? Yeah, you know, um, it's so interesting because I really love being with the students. And so originally when I had started at Seasons of Seven, I thought, well, you know, I, I won't really have that experience being online and it might feel different, which it does. It feels different, but um Absolutely. I still had the feeling that I had a class and I formed connections with my class um, and got to know all of the students so deeply. Um, and so when I was looking to go back to um, teaching in person, that was really, I was going back to the school that I had been at before COVID and I had this strong community. I had been teaching there for 10 years and they really were wanting me back. Um, and sadly, our school is closing, which I'm very sad about. I love my class, but I'm equally excited about coming back to seasons of seven because there were so many things that I really enjoyed about the experience of teaching online. Um, I love the freedom of not having to be in the city. Um, I love um, just having a little bit more freedom to situate my days the way that I want. And then Another thing that I've discovered um, after being at Seasons of Seven, teaching virtually, and then going back to in-person, so having that comparison really strongly for me, is that I'm able to really think about my lessons more than I than I do when I'm teaching in person in a different way. I would That's say. really lovely because you kind of have to be on the fly, right? Like right. when you're yeah. in person, kids ask you a question, you don't have a time to think about it. But if somebody emails you a question, yeah. right, a little time yeah. to think about it. So think about it. And then also I'll plan things for in-person and then uh, things get go sideways and get derailed because whatever, there's some, the fort issue at recess or so-and-so hurt their toe and you have to deal with that. And then so-and-so is running around and you got to, you know, there's the right. management aspect as well, um, which it just a lot of that will get derailed. You're like, okay, I didn't even get to this wonderful idea that I had. And I really wanted to bring this, this to the students, but then all of this happened in my day. Um, um, actually, and... sounds like a homeschool mom. Like seriously, yeah. <laughs> but I, I love just, that. Be like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that the dog was going to need to go to the vet. That right. the car tires were going to be flat. Like all those things that happen, and it's so different when you have somebody else taking care of the learning for you, right. with you. I love that so much it's actually the first time that one of our teachers um verbalizes that that you, gives you a chance to really plan okay. out um in a different maybe more thorough way than you could in brick and mortar 
And yeah. also, you know, that is what we try to provide is consistency for the kids so that, you know, the homeschool parent can stay on track and have consistency. So that's, it's really cool to, to have you realize that after going back, right? Because then right. you realize yes. that, oh, wait, I don't have this time piece that I used to have. All right. Totally. Yeah. And I feel like I can get to a lot more too. You would think being in the classroom for seven hours or whatever it is that you have more time, but really, um, you know, there's all those things that come up <laughs> that you have to plan. Right. So um, yeah. <laughs> I think too, like, this is just like on the side, like really you get to like creatively not have to talk to all the people you have to talk to when you're in person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can kind of sidestep a little bit and be like, okay, I know, I know how I can deal with this, but I can deal with it and I can think, th think it through before I have to, because, you know, when we're in person, it for anything, right, there's so many personalities that are coming at us. And so it's, it's really nice to be able to take that deep breath yeah. back. And right. And you don't have to deal with it in the morning when you have 20 other things juggle it. You can, okay, this is when I'm going to deal with that issue. Totally. No, that's totally, I, I love it. Yeah. So like, how do you think the virtual classroom is different in like how we support things versus how, you know, like how we support families and how we support parents versus like a school model, like when you're in person? Um, You know, I think each teacher is different as well, but in general, it feels like the parents have more of an idea, especially I was teaching seventh and eighth grade before, um, and um, the parents, of course, they have more access to everything that the students are doing each day if they want that. Um, so I think that it, in a way, they have greater communication as they want, and a lot of their fears of what, if they have fears about what's being taught, it's really transparent. They can have access to all of that, um, and. Uh, as the teacher, I am, you know, working with the parents to help support each of the students. So I think that I ended up having more discussions with parents about their curriculum and how their students are doing academically, and not as many discussions about whatever dramas come up in middle school. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I still have meetings about, okay, this is what your students are going through and all right. of that. So they have that idea in that sense, but um, it's less about the interpersonal and more about the content of what I'm bringing. Because here at Season of the Seven, we offer weekly parent office hours for them to come and talk to you. How often do you th does that happen in a brick and mortar setting? Um. Three times a year is what I traditionally did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so that's a big much. difference. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a huge difference. Like from the parent perspective, if I need something or I have a question about something, it's really easy to ask it. Rather than right. got to yeah. make an appointment, got to try to catch you when I pick my kid up from school, that kind of thing. So and then feeling like you might be bothering the teacher to ask hey. the question instead of it just being built in that this is normal every week we check in and see how every we week. Do. No, I, I think that's lovely. And I think, I mean, it's lovely too, because I know not everybody feels the need to check in, but it, it also, especially for families that maybe they aren't as familiar with the Waldorf curriculum, it makes them feel better to be able to come and ask you questions and, 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 you know, how can I support this at home then? How can I, it, you know, have, have those conversations that you might not have otherwise. Um, I remember being at a handwork teachers conference and all the other teachers were in-person teachers. And I said, so how does this translate at, at home? And they were like, we don't know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't like, so where, you know, in the homeschool setting, we're looking at all of those pieces and it's really lovely that the parents can be involved with you in creating all of those pieces and, and bringing Waldorf like through the screen into your house. It's not just what you're doing for school. Right. Absolutely. So Melissa, you used through the screen, um, yeah. you know, often, often people ask us, you know, Waldorf through a screen, does that really work? So I'm going to ask you, Jaya, how you thought it worked, you know, your first two years at Seasons of Seven, because we've heard a lot of teachers say that they've managed to make the screen disappear. 
Right. Love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I think that's something at first that I was nervous about as well, um, is would I really be able to connect with the students when I'm making pre-recorded lessons? Like, how does that feel? But I've found that eventually it got to the point where just like I would be in a classroom, I'm thinking about particular students while I'm telling whatever mm -hmm. my history lesson, I'm thinking, okay, well, I know this student really loves food, so... I'm going to be thinking about this you know, while I'm adding some details <laughs> about food, for example. Um, so I think mm -hmm. that eventually it just gets to be, this is the medium, but it doesn't really, we're still connecting on a soul level, even if the students are right in front of me. Um, I'm still thinking about them while I'm planning. Um, and when we're having our Zooms, you know, I still am connecting with them individually and really even the students that I had um, for eighth grade several years ago, now that next year they're going to be seniors, I still like, I think about all of those students and, and, you know, they still, we still have a connection, even if I haven't so, seen them. Yeah. <laughs> no. So we have Super Sam, who's going to be 12, 12, in 12th grade next year, <laughs> and he my brain. He's going to be in 12th grade next year. And he had Miss Jaya in eighth grade and he is over the moon, like somersaults excited to have Miss Jaya again for 12th grade because you really created a connection. And I was just thinking we had some behavioral issues with him in eighth grade <laughs> that you really, and they weren't like, he wasn't naughty. He just, well, he was not, he was not like, he was just like, not always good with his integrity about doing his schoolwork all the time and it was great that the two of you had a great connection and I I remember you must have been at a place where you were like okay it's time to involve your mom now yeah <laughs> but, but you guys had already been working on it and then by the time I came in there it was more of a conversation of okay well how do we get you uh, you know where you need to be rather than oh you were so naughty Kind of thing right. it was more of a conversation of like let's how do we support you and and get you where you need to be and I think that's what's so lovely about Waldorf in general but definitely about this model is that we you know we're bringing we're inviting the parent in but we're also you know sharing these these relationships with the kids in a very healthy way and in a way that um really allows for you know fostering of their own growth especially as they're as they're getting older yeah. especially as they're getting older yeah and for the adolescent students they're at this place where you're trying to build that those capacities for them to become adults and give them more freedom and so in a homeschool model where they ha start having this different relationship with their parents where Sometimes for some students, it's good for them to have an outside person that is Absolutely. still holding them accountable, but is letting them kind of break away from the family dynamics um, in a different Absolutely. way. And I should tell you that that situation with you changed the trajectory of his the rest of his schooling. <laughs> We've not had that, that okay. issue because he learned yeah. and he learned <laughs> he had a good, he had a good mentor. And I think that that's I think that that's really a beautiful space and I'm, I'm really excited for you to come back and, and be with our students again. So tell me you're doing class 12 and class eight, right? Yeah. Or like the third time's a charm. Yeah. <laughs> How many times Four you time. Well, no, I had taught twice at seasons of seven. So this will be my third time. <laughs> and then I've taught, taught eighth grade also twice in person. So very cool. Lots so this of eighth grade experience. <laughs> lots of eighth grade. So you yeah. you know this energy. You know these right, kids. Yeah. You know these middle schoolers really well. Yeah. <laughs> really well. Yes, and then tenth yeah. grade as well. Some tenth grade lessons. So mm -hmm. Very excited. Good. I've I haven't taught high school yet, but um, I'm excited for it. I love the curriculum, and you know, when I first started teaching, I also had a little bit of trepidation about working with the older kids it's like well I don't know like it sounds kind of hard they're a little bit scary but I've really grown to love the age and just being able to build those different connections with them one-on-one -on -one and really helping each individual become the best version of themselves which they're starting to become really their individuality is blossoming at the age so and I have found online that I'm able to help support them finding time and being available for them. Um, it's still there. And in some ways, 
is it's different, maybe not easier, but um, it's kind of built in having that one-on-one -on -one time without them feeling like, oh, my classmates are going to see that I'm okay, a I'm bothering my teacher. teacher you know, make fun of I'm me. in trouble yeah. or whatever because they are so peer motivated at this this age. So just having that time where it's just us, not the outside distractions um, is really nice. I think it's super interesting to me and, and exciting is that you are also in what Steiner considered that almost perfect mentor age. You know, you're, you're not like super older, you're in the space that you're not that much farther from them than, um, than, than, you know, than, uh, than somebody that's in their twenties. So it's really, you're in a good space for them and they really need those mentors that, that are like either youthful or youthful in spirit. And I think that right. that is a beautiful space. So it's very, it's very exciting to have that for the high school. Yeah. She said so, it's so cool. <laughs> no, say that again. I said you're saying she's still cool. <laughs> I can pretend at least. Totally cool. <laughs> so, why are you as a teacher really excited for virtual this year? Um, you know, kind of all of the reasons we already spoke about being able to focus on the lessons, having a little bit more freedom to um travel around a little bit. I'm kind of at this point in my life and my trajectory where I don't exactly know where I want to be next year. So this gives me the opportunity to have the space to figure that out without feeling like I'm committing to another class for eight years and then I'm, I'm yeah. there with them um, in, in one place. So that feels that feels nice to have that. But then also just to be able to get back to focusing on the lessons and focusing on my connection with the students and um, the families and all of the politics that go into school and trying to keep the school running and all of that yeah. heaviness that I've been working with, with in the last few years. Um, just leaving that to these very capable other humans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. No, I it's it is actually something that I hear echoed a lot in the Waldorf community. Uh -huh. So that it, that part can become very heavy when you know life starts to become heavy, and so then it it's just harder. So, Miss Melanie, did I miss anything? Well, I was going to ask a question, but I think that one kind of covered it. So let me ask it again, but. I think we already covered it. So when people come to seasons of seven, I always say, I want them to live their very best life. Mm -hmm. So what I was going to ask you was any big plans to live your very best life? You as Jaya? Um, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I think that just having some time and space to figure out exactly what that means to me is, and saying. I think you you answered it with the travel yeah. and with the yeah. load off your shoulders and yeah. mm -hmm. a lovely space. It's a lovely space. And I feel very blessed to be able to walk this space with you. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing a few minutes of time with us. I'm really excited to have you with us this year. And thank you again so much. Have you heard of the candle access at Ariel's Light? This membership is perfect if you are looking for full-length podcasts and you want to catch the replays from the monthly gatherings. Your candle access also includes the Beacon Files, which are 40-plus hours of inner work content, as well as biz schooling for all the families homeschooling and running a business. There's the meditation series with the introduction to meditation, meditation for the parents, and meditation for the children as well as our archive of 2023 with full-length podcasts and gathering replays. Join for only $5 a month at ariel'slight.org.